I'm free, new country, independent republic of Texas. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Not with those borders, you aren't. What? You look like this. I look like this. Uh, no, that's my river. No, New Essex is your river. Oh, yeah? Don't make me make you smell pie. Oh, yeah? What are you gonna do? Kite to the U.S.? Yes. Okay, everyone, two things we need to vote on today. Number one is the Treaty of Annexation for Texas. Now, cast your votes. All right, two thirds against, one third for. We are not annexing Texas. Second thing, should we subscribe to Lumbago or listen to Drake's music? Now cast your votes. 100% vote yes for subscribing to Lumbago. Wait, who's Lumbago? I'm just what I feel liberated, I, I The year is 1844, and James K. Polk has been elected president by being a hardline supporter of Manifest Destiny. Wait, what's that? It's where the Americans believed that they were destined to stretch from sea to shining sea. Like a plague. At this time, America had annexed everywhere but Oregon, Washington, much of the Southwest, and Texas. Yet. Keyword is yet. They would stop at nothing to gain any territory. This leads us to April 5th, 1845, when Santa Ana was exiled to Cuba. We will get back to him soon, but more importantly, in 1845, the U.S. annexed Texas in December. In January of 1846, President Polk ordered General Zachary Taylor to occupy Corpus Christi in the disputed Texan frontier, and also sent a naval squadron to the Gulf of Mexico. Meanwhile in Mexico, the government fell apart in December, and in January 1846, a new government was formed. Tensions were then escalating when Polk ordered Taylor to move further south through the Rio Grande and blockade Veracruz. Wait, why did he do that? Well, Polk has sent a delegate John Slido secretly to Mexico to negotiate the Texan border and purchase New Mexico and California for $30 million. However, the Mexican president, Jose Joaquin Herrera, was aware of what Slido was trying to do and refused to visit with him, which is why Polk ordered Taylor to move south. General Taylor made it to the Rio Grande in March, which led Mexican General Francisco Mejia to issue a proclamation threatening hostilities against U.S. troops. Basically, if U.S. troops came close, the Mexicans would shoot on sight. Soon in April, minor skirmishes between the two sides broke out, and in May, Mexican forces began to siege the U.S. Fort, Fort Texas, which was built near the river, beginning the first real conflict of the war. April 25th, 1846, a day which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by the land forces of the Empire of Mexico. Hey, you stole FDR's speech. Who's FDR? I don't know. You two. Shut up and let me speak. So, I stand before you today asking for war in response to Mexico invading our territory and shedding American blood on American soil. So, we're gonna go to war. Wait, was that really our land? Yes, now get out of here. Wait, he's got a point. What gives you the power to declare a state of war over disputed territory? Okay, you know what? Both of you are committing treason. Now let's go to war. The new war divided an already divided nation. Abolitionists thought the war was an attempt by slave states to extend slavery, and one abolitionist, Henry Davis Thoreau, famously wrote the book Civil Disobedience, which still influences the world today. I come before you Southerners today to prove to you that this is an unjust war that you support. Look, if a government is of such a nature that it requires you to be the agent of injustice to another, then I say break the law. Let your life be a counterfiction to stop the machine. Whoa. I need to write that down. Get this idiot out of our town? Yeah, get out! Wait, you're not even gonna consider what I said? No, this war will make us so much money! How? By expanding slave states so we can grow more crops! <laughs> yeah, then that makes the war even more unjust. Not to us, no. Well, you are just a minority of our population who happens to love minorities. What? No, we love buying them and using them to justify a war. Uh, no, you love minorities so much you buy a whole bunch of them, and I bet your war won't happen. Goodbye. Well, that was rude. The war began anyway and started with Santa Ana. Hey, Polk, what is this thing? A phone? Where did you get it? The future. Anyways, I have a proposition. What? If you get me back to Mexico, I'll help you get all the Mexican territories you want and let you into war. Okay. Finally, I'm back. And Mr. President, I promise I do not want to be president anymore. But I will happily use my military experience to help you fight America. Find my me. Here's the army. 
Thanks. Now I'm president. Wait, what? You can't do that? I'm president. Nope, I am. You and what army? Ah, oh, Lumbago. Okay, men. Today, we head north and kick the U.S. out of our territory. We will kick those morbidly obese, McDonald's-loving, gun-loving, cousin-loving pigs out of our land and show the world that the Mexican Empire and the Mexican people are not a force to be messed with and will never back down, never what? Never give up! Now, let's go destroy these land thieves. Um, sir? Yes, whatever your name is? It appears that Santa Ana is now leading the Mexican army to fight us. What? But he told me he let us win! He lied to me! I can't believe he lied! What are we gonna do? We're doomed! No, sir, we are not. At least we are not if I have anything to do about it. Well, then do something. Please, do something. Okay, I'll do something, all right. I will do something, okay? I will do something for sure. I will definitely do something. Don't know what something is, but I'm gonna do- Shut up and go to work! Okay. 